I was weak. That's why I needed you. I needed someone to punish me for my sins. But that's all over now. I know the truth. Now it's time to end this. Hello my disciples, Father Andrew here. Welcome to my second episode of Character Cross Section. Today we're covering a much simpler character, Silent Hill's residential judge, jury and executioner, Pyramid Head. Both the Silent Hill 2 version and the movie version. Getting straight into it starting with Silent Hill 2, Pyramid Head is a relentless, tenacious antagonist following James Sunderland through Silent Hill. And lore-wise, it's not an actual character, but more a physical manifestation of his guilt for murdering his wife Mary. Specifically, James Sunderland's desire to be punished for what he did, which now I'll provide some context for. In Silent Hill 2, James Sunderland's wife Mary is diagnosed with what is essentially an untreatable illness and given three years to live. James tried to find a cure, but couldn't find anything, and over the three years, Mary's mood became increasingly unstable and volatile, leading to James visiting less frequently. The frustration of dealing with the illness, combined with his sexual frustration, among the stress of dealing with her violent outbursts and knowing that she was eventually going to die of the illness, eventually James Sunderland snaps and suffocates Mary. That being a very basic summary of what happened. But what's important is that sexual frustration. It's the reason why, in one pretty controversial scene, Pyramid Head sexually assaults two mannequin creatures and a lying figure. That comes from James Sunderland's built-up sexual frustrations prior to killing his wife. I personally theorise that those built-up sexual frustrations are why the nurses in Silent Hill are so sexualised as well, and it's kind of merged in with Travis Grady's possible sexual anxiety and his discomforts as well from Silent Hill Origins. But the nurses are a completely different thing. Anyway, James Sunderland, after killing his wife, feels terrible about it, feels like he needs to be punished, and Pyramid Head is the physical manifestation of that, at least in Silent Hill 2. But anyway, from a pure writing standpoint, this version of Pyramid Head is incredibly simple and he works as an antagonist very well. And this is where I'm going to give a bit of writing advice. You don't need to make your villains super complex and multifaceted unless they're like a central point to the plot. In this case, Pyramid Head is definitely a central point in the plot, but he doesn't need to be any more complex than he is, especially with the context in how he operates. Which you know what, I'm just going to simplify. He doesn't need to be a complex villain, because it's not the type of plot that demands such a villain. He exists literally as a reflection of the protagonist's wrongdoings, and that is pretty much it, that's all he needs to be. And with that, now we can talk about the Silent Hill movies versions of Pyramid Head. This one is distinctly different depending on which movie we're talking about. In one of them, he only appears twice. Just did some checking, it's the first movie. But anyway, unlike the one in Silent Hill 2, he was created by Alessa to punish the cultist for what they did to her. Regarding his two appearances in the movie, the first time is in the Otherworld version of Midwich Elementary School, in which one of the characters, Rose, runs into the building but is overwhelmed by bug creatures known as creepers, which are these small bug things, after being rescued by a police officer named Sybil, Bennett. Both hide in the janitor's closet, nearly get impelled by a pyramid head, and then he fucks off after the darkness disappears. Second time being when Rose, Cybele, and Anna are about to enter the church of Anna and her devoted followers. Anna throws stones at Alessa's mother, the darkness shows up again, she gets gripped by Pyramid Head, in which Rose and Sybil watch in horror as the monster grabs her by the neck, carries her up the stairs, lifts her into the air, and just straight up skins her alive and throws the skin at the church doors. So yeah, as you can tell, this is a very different version of Pyramid Head from the one you see in Silent Hill 2. Not only is his design different, the head being a basin shape and not a triangle at all because it was basically impossible to make an authentic replica of the original's head and have it be constructed in a way where a person could actually move around while wearing it. And his body is not very deformed like it was in the game, instead being tall and powerful and pretty buff. So it's fair to say that the movie version of Pyramid Head is a different continuity from the games. And when it comes to Silent Hill Revelation, he's mentioned as a protector and assassin of a lesser by Heather Mason, is seen operating a carousel at Lakeside Amusement Park, and also helps Heather on a few occasions, which is very out of character for Game Pyramid Head. But this happens in the movie because Heather is the good side manifestation of Alessa's soul, the first example of which being when the prisoners in Brookhaven Asylum grab her, in which she appears in the corridor and just fucking goes ham, slicing all their arms off so they can't grab her anymore. And towards the end in the sanctuary, where Pyramid Head battles the missionary and kills it by decapitating it. 
and then just walks away after, despite getting injured several times. So yeah, it's very clear that the movie version of Pyramid Head and the games are two different continuities and two different versions. As I honestly can't imagine Silent Hill 2 Pyramid Head showing kindness to anyone. You know, it's fair to say they're both different versions of the same character. But anyway, regarding how movie Pyramid Head is written, he's distinctly different from Silent Hill 2's Pyramid Head, and I feel like they use him to very good effect in both movies. He's a noteworthy but not particularly common antagonist in the first movie, who is more of a side threat to the protagonists than anything, which makes sense as the cult are the main antagonists of the first movie, and him being created by Alessa to punish the cultists for what they did, feels very fitting with the way he's shown in the game, him being basically James Sunderland's desire for punishment, so thematically he lines up with the plot of the first movie pretty well, albeit his origins are notably different, and with the second movie, I do like the fact that they actually tried to do something different with him, in a way that I guess fits his character but also actually has some serious involvement in the plot, especially considering the fact that this version of Pyramid Head was made to punish the cultists, and protects Heather Mason as she is the good half of Alessa, the thing that made him to punish the cultists for what they did to her, so his theme of being a being that brings punishment is staying consistent in the movies, albeit in a different way. You know, I'm just going to simplify all of this down. He's still being used plot-wise as a being that delivers punishment. He's still being used as what his character is intrinsically supposed to be, albeit the movie version has a completely different reason for existing and motive. And with that, I'm just going to be honest, I quite like the movie version of Pyramid Head. He's definitely more complex than the game version, but he's no more complex than he needs to be, which from a writing standpoint is pretty good. But yeah, and with that, that is Pyramid Head, the judge, jury, and executioner of Silent Hill. Sorry this episode of character cross-sections being quite short, I do plan to do longer ones that go into more detailed characters at some point, but there's no real schedule with these things, because I want to take my time with making them as good as they can be. And with that, we've reached the end. See you all in the next video, have a good day, night, or afternoon, see you around, goodbye.